I'm going to do this uh, Raw report here real quick, then we'll talk about it. There's a lot to talk about. So it opened up with a Cody Rhodes promo, and uh, he did a great promo, AEW-style promo, and he acknowledged that he had been elsewhere. He said it was an easy decision to come here, signed a multi-year deal. Fans chanted, you deserve it. And then he told a story about a photo that they had in their house, Dusty had in his house, of a match at Madison Square Garden, September 26, 1977. Dusty's holding the belt over his head, and Cody notes, he held the belt, but he never actually won it. Because he won the match via count out, and the title cannot change hands via count out. And so he said it was the belt that Hogan, Undertaker, Michaels, Triple H, and many other had, had held. And he said his father was a hero, and he had vowed that someday he was going to get that belt, and he was going to hand it to his father. But his father died. So he can no longer hand the belt to his father, but he can win that belt and strap it around his own waist for himself, for the fans, and for his family. So that's the storyline. Cody's goal is to win the WWE Championship that his father never won. And there's a lot of ways that you can do this right. And there's also a lot of ways you can... Uh... I mean, he's going to win the title eventually. But I feel like there's a way they could do it and it would be awesome. And there's a way where they could just do it. So we'll see which one they choose. But I know which one I'm leaning towards. I hope for the other. We had a non-title match. This was absolutely positively classic WWE. It is champions, Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. But it is a non-title match. Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Rhea and Liv in a non-title match ends when Liv Morgan is pinned clean in the middle of the ring by the champions. Rhea has been with one geek partner after another. She can take no more. She is upset, and she just storms to the back. Later, Liv goes up to her. She says, what was that all about? Seems pretty self-explanatory to me. But Rhea says, you know what? I'm sorry I was frustrated. But I have spoken to Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville. And they have granted us a championship match next week. So they lost a non-title match clean in the middle of the ring to lead to a championship match on next week's show. We had a Kevin Owens segment. This was the return or the debut of Elias slash Ezekiel, however you want to, to term it. It appears they will be having a match or something. From Stone Cold Steve Austin in the main event of WrestleMania... To Ezekiel. The Miz, Still worth it. the Miz defeated Dominic Mysterio in 31 seconds clean with the skull-crushing finale. 31 seconds clean in the middle. And then Veer debuted, and he beat up Dominic, and he beat up Ray. And next week, he will kill the legendary Ray Mysterio Jr. on Monday Night Raw. We had a Bianca Belair promo. I thought Bianca was awesome, but you know what? Nobody wants Becky Lynch to be a heel. They've never wanted Becky Lynch to be a heel. They've always wanted her to be a babyface. And so Bianca's here talking about Becky, and there are people booing her. There are people chanting for Becky Lynch. And, bro, get these two away from each other immediately. Get them away from each other. Move Becky on to somebody else and move be or yeah, move Becky to somebody else and move Bianca on to some heel that people aren't gonna like so that she can actually get over as a baby face. Because the irony is that everything that Becky complains about is a heel, is what's actually happening for real with Bianca Belair. So get them away from each other. The sooner the better for the love of God. Braun Breaker beat Dolph Ziggler to win the NXT title ten minutes. No heat, but they did pop big for the finish because they got to see a championship change. You know, we've got an audience that, uh, you know, they're not watching NXT 2.0. So, and who is? Except for me. We had a Bobby Lashley MVP segment. This was also classic WWE. You had a group called the Hurt Business. They were the coolest group in all of Raw or SmackDown. You had MVP. You had Bobby Lashley. 
You had Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander. So what do they do? They they break off Shelton and Cedric. Then they reunite them, and no one cares. Then they break them up again, and no one because no one even knows what's going on. But you at least had Lashley, who's not a great promo, and MVP, who's an awesome promo. Well, they have a match at Mania with Bobby Lashley and Omos. It absolutely sucks. Omos is incapable of having a good match. All people can talk about is, at the very least, I don't want to see one get fired, but you got to send the guy back to developmental or something. Not WWE. No. Bobby Lashley comes out. He does a promo, which is not very good. And then Omos comes out. And MVP turns on Bobby Lashley. And now MVP is managing Omos against Bobby Lashley. You know, there's an old saying, accentuate the strengths and, uh, you know, don't expose everyone's weaknesses. This is, this is like, this is idiot proof WWE. They're making so much money it doesn't matter. But you have literally done everything wrong with everybody involved in this whole scenario. But great. Now we got MVP and Omos. Omos will have bad matches. Lashley do bad promos. Then we had Zelina and Carmella. They're supposed to face Natty and Shayna. But uh, Carmella dances all the way down to the ring. They go to commercial. She dances during the whole commercial break, apparently. They come back, and Zelina's just sick of this dancing. Turns on her. I hate you. It's all, it's all about you. Your husband's an idiot for marrying you. But boy, he's a hand. And I'm like, oh, my God. Now, uh, Corey Graves is a sex symbol all the women want. Carmella gets mad. I'm so, like, I cannot wait for them to get married. I cannot wait. He's leaving, thank God. She's leaving. Get off my television. This is the ultimate go-away heat of the... I tolerated it for long enough. I can't take it anymore. Thankfully, they're leaving, and Jerry Lawler is replacing Corey Graves for a while. That's I, not an upgrade. I That yeah, is. I no. hope... Like, Car- listen... Corey Graves, when he's just a commentator, is better than Jerry Lawler. But now he's not a commentator. He's a part of the storyline. The women are fighting over him. He's got to pander to his... I'm over it! Get out of here for a while! Like, honest to God, I wish them nothing but the best, and I hope that they can pay for, like, a six-month honeymoon, and then they can come back and, like, start all over again, and, like, it's over. This is over! I got it! You're married! I don't care anymore! Golly! I think you're handsome, Corey. Jiminy Christmas. Then we had uh, Austin Theory, Usos versus Finn Balor, Randy Orton, and Riddle. I don't know if like, they like think that Finn Balor's leaving or something, but I mean they're just beating him like a drum. Austin Theory pins him for about the eighth time because you know Austin Theory is, and they even said it on TV. He's Vince's new chosen one because Vince always has to find a handsome guy with a good physique. Who can work, but then he's got to go beat everybody that works better than he does, and everybody turns on him and hates the guy, and they think he's being shoved down there. This is classic, classic WWE. That's what we're seeing here. Edge and Damian Priest segment. Fans just mocking them throughout this segment. Edge is now uh, the old Seth Rollins Messiah gimmick. I'm going to be brooding and do uh, you know very generic monotone promos. Damian Priest is, uh, you know, it's 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 literally it's a Jericho Appreciation Society, but it's Edge, and uh, Damian Priest is, I don't know, one of two point oh, but anyway, fans are chanting, you know, we don't care, and then Edge goes, well, of course you don't care, you're you're idiots, and they chant, we are idiots, <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever, it'll be better next week, they won't have this crowd. And then AJ Styles comes out, and they beat him up, and they're going to give him the concerto. But uh, thankfully, for once in in anyone's life, the guys actually come out to save AJ. And then we get a chant for Jamie Noble, who was the only over guy in the segment on this Raw after WrestleMania. We had the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. I mean, it was all right, but it's one of those matches where they're all in the ring together. It's a Texas Tornado match. So they're like falling on each other and they're in everybody's way. This would have been a thousand times better. It's just a tag match, but it's a wrap to WrestleMania. We got to do something wacky. And then uh, Ford uh, pinned Gable, splashed him through a table. It's a good finish. And I mean, they worked hard, but I, I think this could have been better. And then the main event of the show is a Roman Reigns segment. Roman Reigns comes out. He goes, 
I know what you guys want to hear about, but let's mix it up a little. Paul, tell everyone how great I am. Isn't that every Roman promo? So Paul tells us how great he is and all of the business records that have been set under Roman Reigns. And then he gives a mic to Roman Reigns and Roman says, you know, after what I did at WrestleMania, unified these titles, beat Brock Lesnar. Some men, some men would uh, call it a career, but not me. I am a progressive tribal chief, he says. Perhaps he's running for office. And he says, I'm going to tell you guys what's next on SmackDown. And then they all go like this. And then the fans all go like this. Roman was over as a total baby face. They weren't even mad that he wasn't going to tell them tonight. They were like, cool, SmackDown! And that's how the show ended. So there you go. I was not uh, blown away by this Raw. I just wasn't. It didn't suck. But it was not the Raw after WrestleMania we have seen in the past. That was more of a Raw hangover <laughs> type of deal. Because, again, it wasn't wasn't an awful show at all. Uh, some of the monotony of those seeing WrestleMania uh, footage in there as opposed to some of the long, drawn-out stuff that they usually do. Again, it, it was okay, and I guess we can get into a little bit more of it. We'll get, get more into it with Mike after the break, everybody. Hold that thought. Okay. Now, there was an incident last week where I lost my mind and uh, attempted some gory self-mutilation. Jenny, stop that! No! I don't believe my own eyes anymore. What, what, I, what, I, what I think I see, they're telling me I didn't see. All right? <laughs> but that's what happened. Okay, so seven days ago, seven days ago, he shaved his own head. He comes back here. I swear to God, his hair's back again. <laughs> well, like, nothing happened. I'm trying to hang on. I'm trying desperately to grip on reality. And every time I, every time I think I'm there, every time I think I'm safe and stable, Duke Hudson's hair changes again. His motivation changes again. Something about Dante Chen. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.